What's up guys, Cali Sunset Gaming with you again and today we're going to be talking about video games based on movies and how they suck ass. Now usually it's just a weak attempt at a cash grab off the back of a film success, yet it's one of the worst and overlooked tropes of the industry and today what I want to do is break down exactly why I think it needs to just die, really. Now before we get started, I will admit, I'm not too proud to admit that there are some exceptions to this rule. Think about Peter Jackson's King Kong, Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, Boss Game. As a whole, the concept of releasing video games based off films just needs to end. It needs to stop right now. Now I spent time trying to think how to best express how when it is done badly, it is so poor. And then I thought, no, I'm gonna attack this from a different angle. Instead, what I'll do is probably use what I think is the best example, the best in class at basing a video game off a film so that you guys can understand that on the rare, very rare occasion that it's done right, it is immaculate. And I am, of course, talking about The Warriors on PS2. Now, for those of you that don't know that this was a film before it was a game, shame on you. For those of you that do, make sure that you drop a comment in the comment section below, just so that you can let everybody else know how much better you are than them. But also, this indicates an amazing thing, that Rockstar's game is a complete standalone product. And if you haven't watched the film before, the game wouldn't seem out of place as it is a fully self-contained story that not only uses the source material, but builds upon it as well. So what makes it so good? Well, let's break down Rockstar's attempt and just see why it was so different to what has ever come before it and what has ever come after. Now, right off the bat, the game was released in 2005, based on a film that was released in 1979, based on a book that was released in 1965. Now, to me, one of the biggest red flags for any video game that is based on a movie is the correlation between the film's release and the game's release. The closer the two releases, the more likely it is that it's just a shameless cash grab trying to appeal to all the sort of hardcore fans of the film that just want to continue the experience after the film has ended. Now, The Warriors sort of came out of nowhere. Don't get me wrong, the film's a cult classic, but it's definitely not a film that the average age demographic of PlayStation 2 users would have been aware of. I mean, y'all know me. Of course I had seen it, because my dad's a film buff, and I was really fortunate enough to get brought up on films because he just loves watching them. And when I say film buff, I mean that he knows lots about films, not that he watches films in the buff. So straight away we know that this game is not a cash grab. Rockstar are not relying on the cult following of the Warriors to purchase the game, or relying on the film's hype to sort of bring the game success. The aim for Rockstar here is to be a completely self-sufficient project. Keep that in mind. Now the game itself starts months before the events of the film take place. Remman joins the Warriors and is inducted by Vermin with Cleon watching over. Now in the film, we don't actually see too much of Cleon. We only know of his strength based on the fact that when he's wrongly accused of murdering Cyrus, he ends up demolishing three guys about breaking a sweat. There he is! That's him! That's the warrior! He shot Cyrus! Man, you're crazy. I didn't do nothing. We saw him! Yeah, that's him. He's the one! He's the one! The warriors did it! 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 Peace! Now in the game, you really get a full understanding, not only of his physical strength, but just how much of a presence he has and is as a person. 
Now think about it, he's the leader of some really unique personalities. Each one dramatically different, and he brings them all together out of respect. The game captures this in many ways, whether it's through his actions, or just how he interacts with the other members of the gang throughout the game. There is more character development and arc to this character in the game than what was ever alluded to in the film. I believe the approach to set the game before the events of the film is done for two reasons, mainly because the film doesn't last long enough to really make a game from it. The events of the film are only like the last three chapters of the game. Secondly, they use the time before the events of the film to build the world you're in, successfully introducing each of the nine characters from the film, as well as allowing you as an audience member to build relationships with each of the characters, playing as each one before and being treated to multiple cutscenes and interactions between each other and multiple other characters within the world. It also happens in various scenarios so that you can understand the characters further and their motivations throughout the game. Now, too often, games based on films, the character development is just minimal. Do you know why that is? I'll tell you. It's because they're on the assumption that you've already watched the film. So they just sort of think, no, you've watched the film, you already know the character and his motivations, there's no point of us explaining it. This is something that is literally not accepted in any other form of media. Imagine a band release a song and it's just one note and it's the lead singer farting into a painting. You call them to complain and they just go, Oh, we thought you'd find it okay because you've listened to our music before and you know what our themes are. Uh... No, not having it. Beyond the initial character development of the Warriors, it also offers a wider expanse on the world itself. Cutscenes of Cyrus and Messiah discussing the plan to unite all the gangs fuels the growing tension between gangs and police. And whilst all this is taking place, the Warriors go from small-time outfit in Coney to one of the biggest gangs in the city, purely from their reputation of just cracking the skulls of anybody who crosses them. This is a mixture of not allowing anyone to disrespect them, but also being in the wrong place at the wrong time and just simply bopping their way out of it. Their acts catch the attention of the Saracens, who end up getting them an invite to the meetup with the Rifts. The world of the game is also built with something they include called flashback missions. Five missions that show the story of how Cleon created the Warriors and also how the main members joined. Much like the Warriors outgrowing their humble beginnings with their axe, Cleon outgrows the Destroyers and starts his own gang after being double-crossed by the leader of the Destroyers, who actually ends up being the main villain for the first act. Missions like Pelham's Boys in Blue plant the seed for the police officer's perspective on gangs and just how much you should worry about them, foreshadowing events that take place later on in the game that are mirrored by the film. Short scenes are introduced throughout the game of the rogues and their antics leading up to the events of the film, building further development of the characters more than the films ever did. So by the time that they frame Cleon, you're already in a position where you just want to... The early parts of the game also provide foreshadowing for events that take place in parts of the game that replicate the film. Whether it be the cutscenes where we see the rogues after they've executed a cop, leading to all-out warfare between gangs and the police, or the rep of the warriors spreading throughout the city as they defeat any gang that they come up against. One thing that ties this all in beautifully is the radio reports, which are a staple of the film, and they're just radio broadcasts what's listened to by all the gangs, with a radio host will provide bulletins, almost like uh, football results on which gangs are making moves of in the city. In the film, it propels the narrative offering vital information to the audience, and in the game, it's amplified by the fact that any radio that you listen to in the game will be set to that station, meaning that even if you're just walking around, the game will allow you to pick up information that builds the world around you, subtly developing the environment. That, that one-time, small-time outfit from Coney the Warriors has managed to put their name on the map. The Moonrunners should have been keeping their eyes on more than the Van Cortlandt Rangers up in Bella. In Soho, Cracker Jack led the hi-hat standout performance and floored the crowd of panthers who tried to soldier into the show without tickets. Overall, the Warriors game is a must-play classic that will go down as one of the best PS2 games ever made and as an example of how companies should approach making a game based off a movie. A standalone product that takes inspiration from the source material, rather than just a meek attempt at making money off diehard fans. Games like this are so few and far between that this niche 
doesn't really come under any flack. And that's just because the standard is so poor that no one expects any better. My personal hope for this genre is that we see companies given more freedom to expand on the ready-made concepts that have already been birthed by the films, using that existing fan base to develop the narrative from the film and building upon it. I want companies that are willing to risk it, to try something new and exciting, something that draws people in, not only claiming the original fan base of the film, but also drawing more people to the franchise. People that may not have seen the film, that just are purely interested by the quality of the game, which in turn makes them possibly go and see the film as well, to see what the games companies have done differently or improved on. The current collection of this genre is in the dirt, so they literally have nothing to lose. I appreciate you guys checking this video out. Thank you for listening to me just rant. You know, just buying this microphone, it's just got me in a mood where I just continuously want to just argue about stuff. If you did enjoy the content, make sure that you hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And if there's any games that are based on films that you also think suck or think are really good, make sure that you hit me up in the comment section below. I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on whether games ruined your experience or improved what you would experience when watching a film. I appreciate you guys checking the content out and I'll see you next time on Cali Sunset Gaming.